Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a minute since I have done one of these videos, but as you guys know, if you follow the channel, one thing we dive into a lot is the story of Call of Duty and do it in a couple of different ways. Sometimes we do the full story of a game, the ending explained, but one thing that I've done probably more than anything else is dive into the full story of individual characters. I think it's a really cool way of looking at the overall story of Call of Duty, and that is what we are starting out with Modern Warfare 3 today and the character that we are going to be looking at is none other than john soap mctavish now he is a very important character and before i go any further i'm just going to say spoiler warning for modern warfare 3 just in case you haven't played the game yet but now let's get into it as you guys know there is a very sad ending for soap mctavish and as far as he goes he was also in the original modern warfare trilogy now in this video, I am not going to compare the two different stories. However, if that is something that you would like to see, show me by hitting that like button. Let's say if this video, let's go big, hits 10,000 likes, I will do that video where we compare the original soap, his original story, his original death to this of Modern Warfare 3. Also, I would love to hear down in the comments what characters you would like to see me cover next. But as far as Soap goes, he's an integral character within the Modern Warfare universe. He is the right-hand man to Captain John Price. He shares a name with him, but more importantly than that, he has a pretty depressing story. So through this video, we're going to dive into his relationship with the other Task Force 141 members, the role he played in 141, and importantly, without further ado, this is the sad story of John Soap McTavish. John Soap McTavish was born in Scotland sometime in the year 1996. He was an avid football fan, often playing as goalkeeper. One day, sometime around his 16th birthday, McTavish was invited by his cousin, who was a member of the 23rd Regiment of the SAS, to see what it was like to be a part of the British Army. Afterwards, only at the age of 17, he tried to enroll into the SAS several times, lying about his age, but was caught every time. However, after his 18th birthday, McTavish officially joined selection for the 22nd Regiment. So in the year 2014, he was in training. McTavish's evaluator was none other than Captain John Price. He quickly recognized his natural skills, exceptional proficiency, and relentless dedication. Price quickly became very tough and very strict on McTavish, making him his best trainee. His remarkable speed and accuracy in room clearance and urban warfare earned him the nickname Soap, the reason being he would clean house when he would go through the CQB courses. During selection, McTavish passed it with the highest possible marks on all three phases of the course. But he wasn't the best. His time was a few seconds behind the record holder, who is none other than Kyle Gaz Garrick. He then became the youngest candidate to pass SAS selection in the British Army history. Now, Here's where things get interesting because this story matches up with the original Modern Warfare trilogy. His first mission, Soap joined Captain Price's Bravo team traveling to the Bering Strait to secure a cargo manifest for potential WMDs. While Soap retrieved the manifest, the vessel was scuttled by Russian aircraft, forcing them to leave. Bravo 6, we're on our way out! On your feet, soldier! We are leaving! Being the last to Xville, Soap almost fell to his death if not for Price pulling him to safety. Soap felt indebted to Price ever since. So yeah, the very first mission called Crew Expendables is actually canon in this Call of Duty universe. It was then April 6, 2019. Soap was deployed to Verdansk in Kostovia alongside Captain Price and other SAS operatives. They were there as a failsafe. There was rumors of a potential attack in Verdansk, but no one knew what quite was going to happen yet. As it turns out, there was someone that they have heard of, a man by the name of Vladimir Makarov, who was carrying out an attack on the stadium. They were sent in and eventually captured Vladimir Makarov. Bringing him to the helicopter, however, wasn't quite the solution that they thought, because when they did, they found out that it was actually just a distraction. I think we'll all remember this moment. Some more fondly than others. The airport! He pulled us off target! You fucking son of a bitch! I'll blow your Stop. fucking brains out of you, you hear me? I swear to God, I'll do it! Do it, come on! You shut your mouth! Let me finish him! <laughs> John, we have him. He's in custody, he's not going anywhere. Stand down, Sergeant. I thought 
you are the good guys. You gonna rot in hell for this. You'll die in the gulag with the rest of the Russian rats. I'll be seeing you again, McTavish. I promise. This would come to be one of the most important parts of Soap McTavish's life. But for a while after this, Soap was no longer involved in Kostovia with Captain Price. He was kind of put to the wayside after this mission. That was until the events of Modern Warfare 2019. Upon taking out Barkov, a power vacuum was created and many people wanted to take over. Would it be Makarov? Would it be the Zakaevs? Who was going to take over that power? And all of a sudden, Captain Price had an idea to put together a task force, a group Group of soldiers that he could trust, one of which is names you probably recognize. John Octavish, SAS, Sniper, Demolitions, goes by soap. Why? It's classified. Now, where all of the members of Task Force 141 from this cutscene would be either be introduced through the campaign or in the post-season cutscenes and things like that, so McTavish never was. That was until the very end of the Warzone story where he was then introduced in a very brief snippet in a conversation between Captain Price and So, stating that finally, when the Zakaevs were taken care of, he was now coming in to support Task Force 141. To this day, we still don't know where he was for that entire battle that took place on Verdansk. So, what's your position? Have a click off the coast. Things are really heating up out here. Hold tight. We're moving your way. On me. Now, I don't know whether to include this or not, because zombies lore, I, I don't know if it's canon within the single player or not, but in the year 2021, something called Operation Deadbolt happened, where Zakaev, yes, Victor Zakaev, the guy that we just talked about dying, surfaces and goes to Yurzikstan. This is the entire zombie storyline, and Soap is fighting alongside Laswell and Ravanov to stop what is going on here. Now, again, I don't know if that's canon in the single player or not, but I just included it in case it is later. Now, fast forward to October 2022. Soap and his new lieutenant, Ghost, were tasked with apprehending Hassan Ziani, who declared war on the US for the death of General Gorbani, which is what you do in the very first mission as a ghost. Now, at this time, we see a weird animosity between Ghost and Soap. Keep up, so. Hold tight. Ghost, we need to secure that crash site now. First we clear for her son. That takes the heat off Alpha. Then we secure the crash site. Clear? Roger that. Let's move. But by the end of the mission, Task Force 141, and specifically Soap and Ghost, end up finding American ballistic missiles. Now, at this time, we find out that Alcatala is working with Las Almas as a weapons dealer. So, Soap and Ghost are linked up with a new colonel by the name of Alejandro Vargas and his squad, the Los Vaqueros. Now, this is the first time that we get to see the relationship between Ghost and Soap, and it's more of a mentor-mentee relationship, mainly stemming from the fact that Ghost simply likes to work alone, but they still enjoy to joke around. Sergeant McTowish, call me Soap. Lieutenant, last one says they call you Ghost. Actually, I believe he prefers to How do? At this time, you end up working not just alongside them, but call in a little bit of extra help from Shadow Company and Commander Philip Graves. With their help and an AC-130, they end up capturing Hassan, but with a lack of evidence, they have to release him. So Soap comes up with a new plan of getting intel on Hassan, and the way to do it is go to the number one for the Los Almas, El Sinambre. So he suggests that he goes in undercover. I'll do it. You go in there and they'll kill you, hermano. I'll take my chances. We came here to stop a missile. Let's stop it. I'll offer intel for a meet with Sinombri. And if he's there, we pounce. Orderly. So they end up capturing El Sinombre, who gives them their next piece of intel where the next ballistic missile is on an oil rig. And Task Force 141, alongside Commander Philip Graves, all go in together and manage to stop that missile. However, when they return to Los Alamos, and specifically the Los Vaqueros compound, things changed because Graves is no longer working with them. The tides have shifted, and they now have been betrayed. Shadow Company, by the orders of General Shepard, have turned on Task Force 141 because they are getting too close to the real information. The fact that those ballistic missiles were lost by Shadow Company and General Shepard. So they are turned on and all of Task Force 141 manages to escape. 
However, Soap falls down a hill, gets shot, and now he is all alone. And all he has to work with is his bare hands and a radio talking to Ghost. Sending transpo to your location for all prisoners. Stand by. Need reinforcements from the North Plaza now. This is Bravo 7 1 in the blind. Who copy? Of course, this is 7 1. Do you copy? Fuck, where are you, Ghost? So, this is Ghost, our copy. Johnny? Johnny, our copy. Solid. Thought we lost you. Now, for the first time, it's not Ghost who's the one alone. It is Soap, and you can hear the urgency in Ghost's voice in the radio as he's directing him through the city. And you can almost see a compassion through Ghost as he tries to tell really horrible jokes in order to cheer up Soap and get him to rescue. Why is two legs and blades? Don't tell me. Half a dog. I asked you not to tell me. But it's not just that, now that Soap's alone, we kind of get to see the real relationship between LT and, as we hear him called, Johnny. Alejandro is no Esa Romano. If he's alive, he's on our side. Be careful who you trust, Sergeant. People you know can hurt you the most. Good advice, LT. I want to be like you when I grow up. You want to be better than me, Johnny? Got my work cut out, then. That you do. Think I'll live that long? Probably not. But it's when they get to rescue and get to a safe house with another person from the Los Vaqueros by the name of Rudy that we get to see a change in heart in Ghost. He no longer works alone. He wants to work with his team, Task Force 141, and alongside his new buddy, teammate, friend, Johnny. Ghost waited for me. Of course, no? No. Yes. We're a team. All of us. This happened on my watch and I'll need help to fix it. No one fights alone. So from here, they go ahead and rescue Alejandro and the other Los Vaqueros from the prison, after which they strike the revenge on Shadow Company, going directly after Commander Philip Graves. They do this as Ghost Team, undercover in the shadows, and by the very end, they end up getting in a fight with a tank, which they believe Commander Philip Graves is inside. As we know by now, he wasn't, but this is how things go. That's him with another! Did it so? You and me, Hermano, brought a gun to a tank fight. Yeah, we did. So up the ghost. I'm with Rudy. Graves is KIA. So from here, there is one ballistic missile left, and it just so happens to be in Chicago. But that's not the only thing that is in Chicago. So is Hassan. So we move in, stop the ballistic missile. However, at this point, Hassan is trying to stop you, and by the very end, Hassan has an upper vantage. But as Ghost said, no one fights alone. And this time, Ghost did have Soap's back. We're not attacking. <clears throat> we are invading. Perfect show, LT. You called it, Sergeant. All stations. Hassan's down. Enemy KIA. So with our threats taken care of, Shadow Company now in the wind, seemingly everything's good. We've eliminated the threat of Hassan. However, Kate Laswell informs Task Force 141 that there are now bigger fish, one specifically that the crew recognizes. And as we now know, they recognize him from Verdansk. And of course, that is none other than Vladimir Makarov. Who is he? Makarov.
Roger one to Bravo six. Watch to Bravo over. As well, go for six. John, Makarov is out. Say again, Laswell. Makarov is out. He's on the move, John. The board. Turn us around. Turn us around now. So immediately upon Makarov escaping, all of Task Force 141 knew how dire the situation was and knew that they immediately needed to try to stop him. And one of Makarov's first moves was to try to get weapons, specifically gas weapons. So Captain Price moves in with the overwatch of Task Force 141. And this time, instead of John Price being the person that comes to Soap's rescue, it is this time Soap that grabs Price from falling from his death. Now, Task Force 141 then discusses the history with Makarov, how they captured him in Verdansk, and four years later, he has now escaped, causing terror across the world. Soap and Price can't help but feel guilty for letting him survive in that moment in the helicopter in Verdansk, but this makes them all that much more eager to stop him once again. The next mission is once again with Ghost and Soap. This time, they are moving in on the banker for Vladimir Makarov, trying to extract information from her. Ghost provides sniper overwatch as Soap makes his way up to the main building where Melina Romanova's house is, and they end up extracting some information from her as well as stopping her funds going to Makarov. Pleasure doing business with you. Good chat. From here, we end up finding about a prisoner transport that's being taken out by Vladimir Makarov. And upon getting there, we find out that that prisoner is none other than General Shepard. And in exchange for saving him from the freezing cold tundra, he agrees to one, tell the truth to Congress about Vera's people and what has happened in the past as well as give us information, all of the information that he has on Makarov. And some of that information leads us to London, where Makarov is planning an attack, specifically using the channel and the trains on it. And upon getting there and finding out exactly what was going on, Task Force 141 makes their way into the channel. And when they do, they end up finding a bomb. At this point, Captain Price and Soap work on defusing the bomb as they are being attacked. That is when this happens. Good boy. Got it. Yeah. Take us to hell with you, Captain. Never bury your enemies alive. So just like Makarov promised four years prior, he would be seeing Johnny once again. And this leaves us with the sad moment at the very end, where the fellow members of Task Force 141 pay tribute to their fallen comrades, saying some words for him, with Ghost being the one that says the last words. Who dares wins? Sleep easy, soldier. See you down range, brother. We'll take it from him. Rest in peace, Johnny. So Captain Price is left feeling guilty for stopping Soap McTavish from taking out Makarov four years prior, as well as losing one of his mentees and one of the top soldiers that he has ever seen. Whereas Ghost loses not just a comrade, but also a friend, the person who taught Ghost that it may be better to fight with a team than completely fighting alone. Well, after this, Ghost is going to feel a whole lot more alone. But that leaves us with his words. Remember, no one fights alone. <laughs> 